Hi, I'm Sean Clark. I'm standing inside the Meeker House from Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Welcome to Horror's Hollowed Grounds. I'm standing in Capitol Park here in Salt Lake City, Utah. This served as the entrance to Ridgemont Federal Sanitarium. This was the police guard station right below me. This isn't a real building below me. This is more of a monument. The ambulance pulls out of frame here, giving the illusion it's going up a driveway to the building behind me, but it just pulls out of frame, and we assume it's going that way. This building's been here since 1962. It's been everything from like children's hospital to a VA building. Today, it's apartments, believe it or not. This building was also used in the producer's cut of Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. This was Smith's Grove Sanitarium. When they wheel Michael out the back of the sanitarium, there used to be a ramp in this area here. This has completely been redone. In fact, most of the rear of this building has been redone. Just on the other side of this wall is Capitol Drive. Across the street is a vacant lot. That vacant lot used to have a house on it. It was torn down in the 90s, but was also owned by the same person who owns the Meridian. We're now off of Highway 39 in beautiful Ogden, Utah. This is also known as West 12th Street. It's here that Loomis drives in, and they park right about here where our beautiful rental car is, and they head down to the crash site, the ambulance. Now, as they're walking down there, you might notice Loomis saying, how many people are on the bus? I don't know what bus he was referring to. I guess he how meant the ambulance, the but uh, this seems to be a little bit of a dumping ground for dead animals and I guess old Christmas trees. Probably a bit of a party spot for kids too. Under the bridge here, there's a lot of graffiti and whatnot. So I think this is probably where they throw a few back at night. Behind me is where the ambulance was crashed in the water. Loomis enters the water to investigate the scene. He then determines foul play. He comes to this determination, maybe because of all the blood smeared on the outside of the ambulance, maybe that tipped him off. If you look closely in the scene when Loomis looks in the back of the ambulance, over his shoulders, you can see this wall of rocks behind him. Once he determines that Myers is gone, he then tracks him to Penny's service station and diner, which is where we're going right now. So Dr. Sam Loomis pulls up here at Penny's, gets out to use the gas pump. Hello? 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 He puts the gas in here, he turns around, sees the garage door open. Now you might notice that the Penny's logo looks different than it did in the film. It was painted on the building. You know, this place has been here since the 40s and it's seen a lot of changes over the years. But for the most part, it's pretty much the same exterior-wise. So Dr. Loomis comes into the garage from here. He then heads over in this direction. Obviously, there's a lot of things stored in here now. It's no longer a shop, so we have some obstacles to get through. But he walks over here, takes a look in this room, and then heads in this direction, passing this window that's been covered up and comes over to right about here where the hook from the tow truck is hanging. So Loomis bumps into the stack of tires here and the mechanic's body falls from the ceiling. So then Loomis heads next door into the diner. Now the interior of this diner has been completely remodeled. 
So now we're inside the interior of Penny's, and as you can see, it's completely changed. It's been renovated and looks nothing like it did in the film. Loomis walks in, he heads over this way, and this is the wall that had all the pictures of Abraham Lincoln. Right over here behind this cooler was the entrance to the ladies' room, and then over here was the entrance to the men's room. And I believe the payphone was right about here, and he turns and he looks straight ahead into the kitchen and he sees Meyer staring back at him. Now behind me you can see the countertops here. It's all in the same place it was before, but they've all changed. There used to be bar stools that were connected into the floor uh, and the opening was actually a walkway and now it's just, it's just a hole where you can see into the kitchen. But basically it's the same layout, just doesn't look like it did in the film at all. But I will say this, they have a damn tasty burger, so come get one if you come to town. So Dr. Loomis exits, panicking, trying to find Myers. Comes out here, he looks around, Michael! And then he comes busting out of the door over here. Drives by the gas pump next to Loomis's car, and somehow, driving past it, sets something off that makes it explode. Loomis's car flips in the air. The explosion drives Loomis over into this area. And he leaps over some trash cans, hitting the wall and shielding himself from the fire. I'm at the McGillis School, which served as Jamie's elementary school in the film. We see a shot where she runs out a front door in slow motion that when she runs out, it cuts to her going down the side of the school where she's then picked up by Rachel and Lindsay. After Jamie exits the school, it cuts to here along this wall where she's walking on 7th South. Now, the interiors were shot here. However, we weren't allowed access. She heads over this area and stops at this tree like this. Sits here for a moment composing herself. Then she hears Rachel and Lindsay pull from the car behind her. She sees them, turns, Heads down here, gets in the car, and they head off that way. On the other side of the school connected to the parking lot is where Earl rescues Rachel and Jamie. This building here didn't exist. If you take a look up there in the background, you can see where the building was, still is today, but where the original foundation was. This was the entrance where they drove the truck in to rescue them. Obviously today, a new modern building stands in its place. So now we're at Vincent Drug in Midvale, Utah. This is where Lindsay drops off Rachel and Jamie and they look for a Halloween costume. The interior of Vincent's Drugs was actually a completely different location about 10 minutes away. We're gonna go check that one out right now. Well, I'm here with Jason Dunn, who's the owner of Mill Creek Pharmacy. This was used for the interiors of Vincent Drugs. So tell me a little bit about uh, the history of this place. Well, uh, we've had the building for since 1987, and when we bought it in 1987, some people came by and asked if they wanted to film a movie here. So actually the pharmacy is, is sort of moved into another part mm -hmm. of this building now, correct? Yeah, the pharmacy is now in a different part of the building, and it used to be here. And a lot of the film, the, a lot of the, the footage was filmed in this area and then the other side of that wall. Uh, Brady's coming oh, yeah? out from the pharmacy. So the pharmacy would have been right, right here. here. Mm -hmm. And you can see that pole there. Yeah. And who's that good looking guy? I don't know who that is. Boy, that looks <laughs> kind of like me when I was a little younger. <laughs> that's funny. And yeah, that was right. That's my brother. Mm -hmm. And I remember that was filmed about three in the morning and we were in the back of the pharmacy right over here sleeping. And they woke us up and they said, get out here and start walking around and carry a rake. And then uh, I think even right in this area here, I remember in the movie is when the, the mirror, the glass breaks. Oh, where was he, like literally he right, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really? like right here, yeah, right so here? right here. I almost vaguely kind of remember them, you know, almost building like a, uh, window and having like a light or something so I don't even think that, it that might be it was right? it so th if that if that's the case then that would be mm -hmm. a fake window they a, built like, right I, here. I, you know I kind of vaguely remember that and that's but that is that window, that window right, right there, there. Mm -hmm. okay. okay 
And you were saying before that these cases, these were the ones that were in mm -hmm. front of the girl. Uh, yeah, those, very, she was putting those very cases right there. Cases. Still used this day. You know what? There's the, mirror, the window we were talking about. I think it's looking down from this direction right here. Does that kind of look? Oh, well, yeah, uh -huh, you can see that right here. Yeah. So I'd say that's that part, yep, mm -hmm. and so they built something. I kind of vaguely do remember them building a, something And you know what? There. See the lighting here? Mm -hmm. So that, this wall probably was right about here. Yep. So they made a little, I do, you know, and vaguely remember them. Where mm -hmm. she sits down on the floor right there right mm -hmm. afterwards, and the camera's looking this way. Yeah. Very interesting. It was the nightmare man. We're now on Highway 84, westbound. This is right before exit 85, Adams Avenue and South Weber. This is where Loomis is denied the ride from the cheerleaders. This is also the same spot where Reverend Jackson picks him up and takes him on the hunt for evil. You're hunting it, ain't you? So now we're in front of the Carruthers house from Halloween 4, the return of Michael Myers. This is where Ellie Cornell, Rachel Carruthers, and Daniel Harris, Jamie Lloyd lived. It was also used in Halloween 5, the revenge of Michael Myers. Right now we're going to go inside and take a peek at what it looks like today. Get out. So tell me a little bit about your history with this house. Uh, when did you purchase it and when did you first find out it was used in part 4 and 5? Uh, well, we bought it in August 2012, I guess, and we had no idea it was used in the films at that point. The uh, seller certainly didn't tell us. Um, I mean, it wouldn't have turned us off, but uh, I guess maybe some people worry about that. But uh, we first found out when we started having these people come by, really around that Halloween, actually, and we'd have people kind of... First, we saw a few people sort of outside, just sort of taking pictures. Kind of wondered, oh, that's a little weird, but whatever. <laughs> it's and a then cool finally, house. Maybe they like the right, house, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, people actually came up to our door and uh, and knocked and asked whether they could take pictures of the house. And um, at that point, we discovered that uh, the house had a history. I think this room you don't really see in the movie. No, I don't recall. Um, but it's definitely shot from here, right. looking, looking into there. Yeah, for the most part, it hasn't changed a great deal in regards to the architecture, at least. I don't think we have this very stylish uh, checkerboard <laughs> floor, which right. I personally like, but uh, it, it was definitely more of an old 80s, 70s, 80s vibe to it at the time. This very yeah. distinctive cabinet thing right here, how it sticks out. Uh, That's right. They were just, yeah, I mean, the, the stain was different, you know, mm -hmm. different appliances, but I think basically the same thing. Danielle comes up from this area and and like eavesdrops and you know I ruin everything <laughs> and then moseys out. Uh, let's take a look at the the famous staircase because that's okay. pretty much the climactic uh, right. scene right. from the film. Well, one thing I noticed right away is this area right here is new. Yeah, so that's new. Um, somebody renovated the house in about 2005, mm -hmm. and I think they basically put in that box that kind of filled in some of the the area above the staircase. It looks in the film, they give the impression that Dr. Loomis is standing on this landing, looking up at Jamie, holding the gun at her, yelling no, but it's actually shot right here. Right, because he's in front of this window. Yeah, and, she, and, and, and looking this way, kind of cheating that shot. Right. When you see the shot, it looks like there's more than than three stairs, but I believe it's because this floor used to be carpeted. That's it, probably it, right. It makes it look like that's actually a, a real staircase yeah, going exactly. up. Exactly. So up here at the top of the staircase is yeah where Danielle stood, and it was kind of in front of what was her bedroom. This right. is where she first sees Michael in the film right. and her visions and everything. And this is your closet. bedroom. Yeah. We're not going to be going in there. Everybody has deserves a little privacy, people. <laughs> um, but. The one point of view shot from the climax of the film where she puts on the mask, she heads down the hallway here, turns and reaches in and grabs the, the scissors from here in this bathroom and then heads down the hall to basically go after her stepmother in this bathroom, which the, the tub is exactly the same. 
Yeah. It's a cool tub. I wouldn't change it either. <laughs> mm. And they, you actually see this tub a lot more in Halloween 5 because they show okay. a little more of the actual kill, where in part 4, I think you just see her turn and go, oh. Another thing that's interesting is in the film, it appears that there's a wall here and that right. this hallway ends, but there's actually a staircase that, that goes down. Yeah, they put an end table or something there to yeah. make it look like the... Uh the hallway just ends. I'm assuming they did that to try to give a little more sense of claustrophobia, like nowhere right. else to There's escape no escape, to. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I'm now in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the corner of Canyon Road and 4th Avenue. This is actually the park where the kids are toilet papering, as you can see here, just before Halloween begins. <sighs> little rascals, what can you do? Right down the street is also where Jamie and Rachel are trick-or-treating, as well as the park where old Ted Hollister met his demise. See this face? Right there, Al. Right there in those bushes. Don't shoot. It's not Myers, just me, little old Sean. I'm here at the War Memorial at Memory Grove Park in Salt Lake City, Utah. This was built in honor of the heroic sons of Utah that gave their lives in World War I. And this is also the same spot that poor Ted Hollister gave his life. You might recall, he was shot right over here. They had some fake bushes put up here. You don't actually see his body, but he was lying on the ground just over here. And uh, this is a significant part of Halloween IV and World War I history. So if you're ever in Utah, I suggest you come check it out for Ted and the boys. So when Rachel and Jamie are trick-or-treating, this is the first house they come upon, 282 Canyon Road. They go up, they trick-or-treat, and then they move to the next house, which is at 278 Canyon Road. They go up here, they get some treats, and they come down here, and they have a moment where Rachel's like, I'm ready, I'm done, but Jamie's like, no, I'm having fun. Halloween's awesome, and they boogie this way. Rachel and Jamie then head over to this house to trick-or-treat. Now, this house happens to be all the way on the other side of town, but that's movie magic for you. And this house happens to be the residence of Sheriff Meeker and Kelly Meeker. They head up to the front door to get some treats. Kelly Meeker greets them, and that's when Rachel finds out that Sasha Jensen, Brady's been cheating on her. He chases her down to here. They have a bit of a discussion. He proclaims, he's different. He's not like the other guys. I'm different. It's just that... A lot of the action happens on the outside of this house. So let's walk around and take a look at the various spots that things happened. This is the driveway of the Meeker's residence. This is where the cars kept coming in and out. The cop cars were parked up here. And everybody seemed to enter and exit out of the back door. Now, that is obviously no longer here. Well, the back door itself is still there, but they put up this wall here and made it a private patio. You can see right here where the stairs used to be, but you can no longer gain access from this part of the house. This is also the spot where the deputy comes out to the car and he notices the back door's open. That's because Myers was hiding and had gotten out and left. He kind of stops for a second, looks around, gathers his things, and heads back into the house. We're now on the left side of the house. Right up here is where Jamie was hanging from the rope, right in between that window and the fireplace. At the same time, Rachel was hanging from the edge of the house up here and she was trying to get away from Myers as he was trying to hit her hands with the knife. She then falls and lands about this area right here. Jamie then grabs onto the trestle that was against this wall, climbs down, falls here, runs over to her and, you know, begs her not to be dead. Don't be dead. Don't be dead. You can't be dead. As she's kneeling down, she turns around and sees Myers coming around the corner. She gets up and takes off this way. So Jamie runs all the way to here, and then she jumps over this fence here into the next yard and hightails it down the street. Well, that's where she went, but we're actually gonna go inside the house right now and take a look at the interiors. Now we're inside Sheriff Meeker's house. As you can see, the door is completely different. It's not that metal door. It's metal, God damn it! it's metal. What does that mean? So a lot of the action in the film takes place in this house. I can't really go in order because there's just so many things that happened here. I mean, this right here was where the deputy was sitting in the chair 
with the gun waiting for Myers. His body was actually found later over here. Kathleen Kinmont and Sasha Jensen obviously have a pretty romantic scene in this area here. One of my personal favorites, actually. And there was a fake wall uh, built here, or a fake door, rather, uh, which is what Kathleen Kinmont was speared up uh, with the shotgun into this, into this fake door, uh, obviously concealing this room that we never see in the film. You might notice over here, there was a bookshelf covering this room. We never see this part of the house in the film at all, kind of giving it a more claustrophobic feel. Now we're gonna head into the dining room. This is where they enter the house a lot from the rear. The back door here, which now has a wall back here, so you can't access it from the rear of the house. This is more of a patio today. In this corner here is where Brady was sitting as Sheriff Meeker enters the room and heads over to the gun case. And right here is the actual case that was used in the film. Think you can handle that? And here is the kitchen where Kelly Meeker is preparing the tea. Originally, the stove was right here, so she was in this area preparing the tea. This island behind me wasn't there at the time. This whole kitchen's been completely remodeled. But you can see that the basic outline of the kitchen from here, all of this is still the same today. The windows are still here, and the radiator was right here by these poles. So relatively still the same. Now we're going to head up to the stairs to the famous landing where Brady and Michael Myers have their confrontation. Happens right about here. Where they have their fight and George Wilbur, as the shape, takes the shotgun and pops Brady in the face and then grabs him here, lifts him up, and then crush. Myers then heads up the stairs to go after Rachel and Jamie. Myers follows them upstairs and eventually down what was a hallway here. This has now been completely modified and made into a much larger room, so this hallway no longer exists. Earlier in the film, Jamie and Rachel are hanging out in this room here. Let's go take a look. As you can see, the bed is in the same position it was in the film, where Jamie was laying here most of the time resting as they waited for the police officers downstairs to secure the house. But as you can see, for the most part, structurally, it's still the same, just a much different color. So now we're heading up into the attic. This is where Brady came up to secure the windows. He went over to the round windows over here and started nailing those shut. Oh, shit. Now, when Rachel and Jamie come up here being chased by Myers, they head over into this direction over here. and then proceed to climb out this window and escape to the roof. Well, I hope you enjoyed all the locations from Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. I tell you, it was quite an undertaking and we did a bunch. I just can't wait to get home to Los Angeles. Uh, Sean, yeah. we, we still gotta do all the locations for Halloween 5. <sighs> can't hit my face. <laughs> for 10 years, Michael Myers has been sitting, waiting for this night to go get his sister. Well, not his sister, his niece. Uh, one of them, Jamie, Jamie Lee, Jamie Lloyd, you know, potato, potato. You've seen it, ain't you? You hunting it, ain't you? You're hunting, I know you're hunting it. I can tell you're hunting it, <laughs> damn. Dr. Hoffman was not, he was not, con ah, he was not convinced. I was gonna say concerned. That's right, I don't use cleanup, I use my horror hound hoodie. Ooh, boogie, you got a bug. Put it on the rock. <laughs> right, anyway. And that's when Rachel realizes that Brady's been cheating on him. So, on him, on her. I'll sign autographs after. Jesus. They always say never work with animals or children, and now I know why. You guys are terrible. You're terrible, even for Halloween 4, you're terrible. Well, after Danielle leaves the school, she storms off this way. You can see the wall behind me or next to me, let me do that again. It's technically next to me, it's not behind me. 
Once he realizes Myers is gone, he then tracks him to Penny's Diner and Service Station, which is weird. <laughs> no! 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 Everybody wants to get a pic with the Seanster. <laughs> There's a really great drawing here, and it says, I love Dick. Call me crazy, I think this is a tribute to Dick Warlock. But, you know, a lot of Halloween fans come to locations, and they mix up their, uh, their, their knowledge and their facts. Who would fuck down here? I mean, really. We found a box of condoms down here. I mean, I, don't, I guess when I was young, I might have been that desperate. I don't know.